da 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 oh wrong noise hey everybody this is captain redbeard back with you i have been a while since i've done a video but i'm gonna start trying to do them around set releases for magic the gathering um and maybe some fun little videos in between um but today i got an exciting one for you i got the hour of devastation pre-release um, it's about 1.30 in the morning uh, Eastern Time. I went to my local game store, signed up for the uh, midnight pre-release, and dropped just so I could get this home, do a video for you guys. So I'm going to quickly open this, go over some of the cards I like, um, and then go to bed. Um, because I can't upload this right this second because Time Warner Cable Spectrum has the worst technical support there is. And so I might edit this before I go to bed, but I can't upload it today. So um, hopefully later today I'll be able to. But to that, let's get to the card cam and let's get this bad boy cracked open. All right. So being Arrow's Devastation, being the second set in the Amonkhet cycle, um, we're going to have in here two packs of Amonkhet, uh, four packs of Hour of Devastation, um, we're going to have a spin down life counter. We're going to have essentially the same thing, I think, as what the Trial of the Gods were uh, for Amiket, a little checkoff card for things to do at your local game stores um, to get special um, dice. Um, they're special D4 dices, um, dices, dice, um, that you get for doing these trials. Here's the box, slides out. Man, that is pretty. I barely caught a glimpse of some of these while uh, people were opening them as I was bolting out the door to drive home and film this for you guys. But man, that is, that's, that's beautiful. Let me get a comparison. So we have Amaket, pretty, you know, nice. Hour of Devastation, frickin' beautiful. Okay, let's crack her open and see what we got. Oh, the one thing I missed here is it is going to have a little lore thing, and it's going to have a promo card. Let's take a quick glance at the lore. I am Nico Bolas, and I'm not going to read this because you're not here for me to read the lore thing. Give some tips on how to do your sealed pull um, in case you're new to uh, pre-releases and sealed. Um, my favorite format, I just, I've not got to play it a lot. All right, let's see. Here is the trial card that I was telling you about. This one, they're calling it the five hours. So we got the hour of revelation, bring a friend to magic event at your local game store. Hour of Glory, win, in, win a game and Hour of Devastation draft event at your local game store. Hour of Promise, play a game with a standard deck at your local game store. Hour of Eternity, join an Hour of Devastation in-store league at your local game store. Hour of Devastation, control or attack a planeswalker during a game at your local game store. That... How can you prove that? I mean, whatever. That doesn't matter. I'll play casual with her friend and be like, hey, let me uh, let me attack your planeswalker. Okay. So, then we go to the promo card, which, oh my god, I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, I mean, Bantu's Last Reckoning, it basically... Oh, uh, what's the card I'm looking for? Uh, Damnation? Destroy all creatures. Uh, destroy all creatures. That's it. It's a board wipe. The only downfall is uh, land you do control. Don't up-tap during your next untapped phase. So say if you're playing this later in the game, you have eight mana open. You pay three. You destroy everything. You're... Uh, your opponent hopefully can't come back from it. If you're playing black, 
maybe zombies you can recur you know you got stuff that comes back to your hand you got stuff that you might be able to get back out of the graveyard go for it I am extremely excited about this I'm not even going to take this out of the wrapper yet because this might be worth a few bucks we'll set that aside thing that me and my wife will be extremely excited about oh man that, that's beautiful as well this is the almond cat spin down life counter sorry misspoke hour of devastation with the nickel bullet nickel bullets insignia and the reason me and my wife are excited about this my wife uh, shameless little plug here she runs a Facebook store slash side business called dice dice baby and if you can't see it here and actually you know what, I'll take it off and I'll show it better on the camera my wife makes necklaces earrings and other jewelry out of dice as you can see here I got my necklace that's my Amonkhet spin down and I already told my wife I said I now need my hour of devastation spin down on a necklace as well so we will have this done um, if you need to look it up dice dice baby on the good old Facebook and you can buy stuff online from us and we will ship it to you all right let's take a quick glance at this box see if I can get it in frame here good so these boxes are really nice because they're a little deck box you can pop out the uh, cards like that and be able to work with them here pretty neat so as I mentioned at the beginning we got two almond cat four hour of devastation and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly open the uh, Almond Ket here for you um, not spend a lot of time on it because you can go back to my previous videos um, and see packs that I've opened I've probably other than invocations of course opened just about every card on my channel so let's open and be quick about it all right illusionary wrappings pathmaker initiate festering mummy Quarry Holler, Inoketra's Name, Gust Walker, Blazing Volley, Taha, Ta Crop Elite, Flood Waters, Watchful Naga, Seraph of the Suns, Gale Strike, Sweltering Suns. That's pretty awesome because I'm looking to grab a couple more of those, so I'm happy about that. And we got a foil illusionary wrappings not anything special but it looks cool and a full art island love the full arts and we got a token all right set that aside next diamond cut all right cartouche of knowledge brute strength Sacred Cat, love it. Cancel. Blighted Bat. I like that one personally for sealed. A real good one to get a uh, a haste flyer. Haze of Pollen. Hooded Brawler. Lux River Shrine. Compulsory Rest. River Serpent. Embalmer's Tool. Honored Crop Captain, Crocodile of the Crossing, and a Soul Scar Mage. Wow. I mean, if I was playing this in Sealed already, I would already be feeling strong about red. And I, I again, I glossed over a lot of these cards as I looked through. But if I had any negative one synergy, I'd be trying to go red black red green is already what i'd be saying in my head because direct damage spells or well non-combat damage spells would give negative one counters um i didn't see any nests of scarabs in here but i mean you know if you're trying to take care of a god or something negative ones is where it's at we got a good old plains and a sacred cat all right let's get into the stuff I'm going to talk about a little bit more because 
even though I've looked at spoilers for days, I'm still not familiar at all with these cards, and I'm learning them as we go. And I'm probably going to say this way too much in this set, that the art is awesome and brutal. Look at that. That's already Kefnet laying on the ground, bleeding out from his head. Um, this is Tragic Lesson. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. Not a bad card. <coughs> Especially if, you know, you have plenty of land out, you return your own land. Either play it the same turn if you haven't had your land drop yet, or save it for the next turn, you know, to make sure you do have a land drop. Sandblast, two and a white. Deals five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Give me a second here. I'm going to pause the recording and start again so that I can get a drink. All right, I apologize about that delay. Let's get past the sandblast. Kindled Fury, a one drop. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike until the end of the turn. Not a bad card. Could be used as a type of removal. Grizzly Survivor, two in a black. When you cycle or discard a card, Grizzly Survivor gets plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. Not bad. I would play this. I mean, if I had good cycling synergy, I'd play it all day. Uh, Rampaging Hippo. Uh, kind of a big cost. Six cost, four and two green. Uh, but he does have trample and he does have cycling. In sealed, I play it all day. Moaning Wall, a defender. We haven't seen too many of those lately. Uh, it's two and a black. Defender, zero, five. And it has cycling for two. I mean, very nice. I mean, it's going to be a good blocker. Um, if you don't need it at the moment, cycle it away. Get rid of it. I'd play it. Um, this one I'm not sure about. I mean, it's a wall of forgotten pharaohs. Another defender, a zero four for two. I mean, it's a good blocker, um, and you can tap it to deal one damage to a target player um, if you control a desert or deserts in your graveyard. Um, I mean, if I was looking for some defense in my sealed pool, I might toss it in. Um, I don't know if I'd really use it much for the tap ability, though. Survivor's Encampment, it's uh, one of the lands, a common land, tap it for a uh, colorless, tap an untapped creature you control, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And sealed, not bad, um, I, I don't like tapping down one of my own creatures, but if I needed it for the mana fixing, if I was going three white and colors, this might be worth it. Oketra's Avenger, one and a white. You may exert Oketra's Avenger as it attacks when you do prevent all damage, uh, combat damage that would be dealt to this this turn. Okay. And I apologize, wiped my eyes, pausing the videos for coffin fits. Like I said at the beginning, it's now actually almost 2 o'clock in the morning and I am tired as shit. But I want to get this filmed so I can get it edited. And as soon as my internet's working again, put this up for you guys. Thorned Moloch, uh, two and a red with prowess, not bad, has first strike as long as it's attacking, okay, makes it playable, it is a three cost bear, um, but that it has prowess that, you know, if you cast a sorcery in an instant, it's going to get that plus one plus one until the end of turn. Or actually, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, so it's more than a sorcery at an instant. Um, and then when it attacks, it has first strike. That's upside. Play it. Some of these cards I don't remember seeing in the spoilers. That one specifically. Razaketh's right, three and two black. Search your library card for search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. And you can cycle it away for one. It's a demonic tutor for I think one extra. Um, plus you can cycle it if you don't need it. I mean 
I'm not a big into tutoring, but I know a lot of people are. Play it. Chandra's defeat very situational. I know a lot of the uh, spoilers are talking about if you see your opponent playing red, play this. Especially if so happen they get a Chandra out, you're going to ruin their day. Um, but yeah, I mean, these defeat cycle cards, Chandra's defeat, Liliana's defeat, things like that. I'm not a big fan of them just because of how situational they are having to play against red, having to play against black. You're having to play on collar. Nah, I mean, when you're playing in sealed, everything is your sideboard. So, I mean, I'd hold on to it and see if I needed it. But I don't see, I don't think I'd see a lot of play unless I just happen to be playing somebody in red. Vile Man Manifestation, one in a black. Um, it gets plus one plus zero for each card with cycling in your graveyard. Not bad. If you have cycling synergy, and there's a lot in these two sets. And it itself cycles for two. So not bad. Not bad. Alright, our first rare, Overwhelming Splendor. And our first rare is a Mythic. Alright. Um, enchant player, it, uh, creature, enchanted player controls, lose all abilities. And have base power of power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. Enchanted player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. I mean, if you're playing against, uh, like, say, a green aggro deck, a red aggro deck, because there's some big red cards in these two sets, and you lay this down late game and they think they're about to win, it's definitely going to slow them down. I mean, because say they have, as an example, three five five creatures. You just made them three one one creatures. I think I think this would almost put me into white if I was if I was playing this as sealed. And speaking of white, there's my planes. And a horse token, which hopefully I draw the card that generates those. All right. Next hour of devastation. Oh, I feel like I'm being so messy with them, but I'm just trying to get through it tonight. All right, active heroism, one and a white. Untapped target creature. It gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn and can't uh, and can block an additional creature this turn. A, you know, that's going to be a nice <coughs> save your ass card. Um, you know, being able to block two creatures and giving plus two, plus two. If you got a three, three, making it a five, five, blocking two creatures, maybe hopefully, you know, they're both two twos. Your creature stays alive and you just mitigated four damage. Either that or bigger creatures. Yeah, you may not save your creature, but you're mitigating that damage. Hey, I like it. Uh, puncturing, puncturing blow, two and two red, uh, deals five damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exiled instead. It's a four cost magma spray for five damage. I mean, in this meta, I don't know if it'll see standard, but this would definitely be good for sealed, sealed draft, whichever you want to call it. Spellweaver Eternal. Prowlis, afflict two, uh, a two one for two. Um, let me explain afflict real quick. If you haven't watched the spoilers, when this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses two life. So, say you cast two non-creature spells, they give it two prowls. Okay, it's a four, three. Opponent says, okay. I want to chump block it. I'm going to block it with a 1-1. One, one. Well, flicked 2 means that when it gets blocked, they're going to lose 2 life. So, if they block, they lose 2 life. If they don't block, they're losing 4. Or other scenarios where it may or may not have the uh, prowess trigger. I mean, I think a flick is going to be a big thing in the sealed environment for, the, for this set. Alright, here we go with some... Uh, negative one synergy and 
not necessarily that it triggers because of them, but it can generate them. This card, I, I already got plans for putting it into decks. It's two black and two. Put three negative one counters on target creature. Its controller loses three life unless he or she sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards the card. Yeah, okay, you're, you're giving them some choices, but the choices aren't good. A, you're probably going to kill one of their creatures with the negative one counters. Two, they're going to lose three life, sacrifice a card, or discard a card. Not, none of that is bad for yourself. I mean, your opponent's not going to like it, but you're going to like it. All right. Sidewinder Naga. As long as you control a desert or there is a desert in your graveyard, it gets plus one, plus zero, and has trample. I mean, a 3-2 three, for three, not bad on its own as a vanilla creature. Uh, but you give it that plus one and has trample makes it a little better um i haven't what maybe seen one desert so far so i mean in this pack that i'm going through so far i don't know if i'd be personally playing it because i don't have the synergy for it yet as long as let's say okay lethal sting as long as as an additional cost to lethal sting put a negative one counter on a creature you control destroy a target creature all day I would play this it's a three damage or a three mana removal and say for example if I'm playing a nest of scarabs deck I'm not afraid to put negative one counters on my own creatures because I'm getting upside from it I'd play this all day crash thought creatures you control gain trample until end of turn draw a card manolith three Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, a three mana mana rock. I mean, not nothing bad about it. Good mana fixing. It works. Unsummon a reprint from days long ago. Um, this is going to be excellent in this set as well. Um, because return target creature to its own, owner's hand for one mana. One mana. So with this set, one thing that we haven't touched on yet is the Eternalize. It's like in Balm, uh, you pay the Eternalize cost, the creature comes back as a token creature. That's a 4-4 black zombie in addition to its other types and abilities. Use on Summon, that token's gone. It's not going back to their hand because it's a token creature. Playable all day if you're in blue. And speaking of deserts, here we go. We got Desert of the Glorified. Um, it enters the battlefield tap. You can tap it for a black mana. I mean, you can cycle it for two. So if you are playing stuff that synergizes with deserts, this isn't a bad card. Yeah, it comes in tapped. It's a little slow. Sealed is a little bit more of a slowed uh, game anyways. Play it. <coughs> Gideon's Defeat. All right, similar to the Chandra's Defeat that I was talking about earlier. Very situational. Exile target white creature that's attacking or blocking. If it was a Gideon's Planeswalker, you gain five life. Okay. We are in a world where Gideon is loved. Um, would I sideboard this in case I played people that had white and might have Gideon's? I might. But I would have to be playing at a store like a local LGS that I know people are running Gideon's for days to have it squeeze into my sideboard. I'm not a big sideboarder as it is, but I always have a hard time picking what to put in it. And I'm not sure that this would be first pick. But in Sealed, where everything in your Sealed pack is your sideboard, hold on to it, watch for the cards if they're playing white. Hey, if you're in white, throw it in, play it, get rid of their shit. All right, Inferno Jet, another card that I'm going to say playable all day. It is a six cost for six damage to target opponent. It cycles for two, so if you need something early game, get rid of it. I mean, it's red, it's burn. 
Yeah, six is a lot for the mana cost, but hey, six to the dome ain't gonna hurt hurt you. <laughs> All right, desert hold. You take a swig. Cause that's a lot of text, and I don't feel like having dry mouth while reading this one. Enchant creature. When desert hold enters the battlefield, if you control a desert. The, or there's a desert in your graveyard, you gain three life. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Um, I think this is pretty much a rest, if I'm remembering right. And, I mean, in sealed, if I'm in white, I'm going to play this as a removal. I mean, it's a good card, even if you don't have the deserts to back it up for the life gain. If you do, hey, awesome, you get three life. If you don't, hey, awesome. You're still messing up one of their uh, attackers. Done and done. All right. And our second one. Okay, this one I'm kind of excited about getting to. And, you know, watching what I've got in the sealed pack so far, I mean, I'm not going to be building a sealed deck on this one. I mean, if, if you'd want to see that, I'm going to keep these cards together. Heck, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll film a video of me going through my process of how I would build a sealed deck, and I'd tell you what I would do with this this, this one, and I'd build a uh, I'll build a deck on camera for you. I'm cool with that. Um, in fact, a lot of times I happen, you know, to have time in between matches, and I'll make two decks out of one pack just for shits and giggles. Let me know if you want to see it. I'll record it. We'll do this. We'll make an appointment. We'll make it a date. Let's do it. All right. So back to the card. So we got Leave to Chance. Um, it's a, uh, what are they calling this? A split card. Uh, leave is one mana white. Return any number of target permanents you own to your hand. Sounds odd, but in my mind is awesome. And then Chance is discard any number of cards then draw that many cards not as awesome but in this set I think that there's ways that you can use that to your advantage so the reason I think it's awesome so in the world of token decks in the world of zombies which I'm personally guilty of and I love it you play leave you bring your own cards back. You play Bantu's Last Reckoning. You play Sweltering Suns. Play Fumigate. You play a Board Wipe. All of their creatures are gone. Yours are back in your hand, ready to be played. All day, even if I'm not in red white, I would take this if I'm in white just for that purpose if I had a board, a board wipe to go along with it. Absolutely. And then the chance, you know, discarding cards into your graveyard and drawing that many cards. Hey, it's one of those things. Discard things that have embalmed. Discard things that have internalized. Get them into the graveyard. Discard maybe a, a desert because... A lot of these desert triggers are even if they're in the graveyard. Eternalize and bomb. That's fuel for your fire. We'll let it come back. All right. And we got a. That's a pretty beautiful island. And we got our first uh, eternalized token. There we go. All right. Let's pick this up a little bit. Alright, Puncturing Blow, we've already seen that one. I need to do some pack maintenance here and clean some crap up. There we go. It's a little better. Alright, Puncturing Blow, we've already seen. Proven Combatant. Here's our first uh, internalized card in the pool, unless I've missed one. Um, but not one I'm impressed with. 
if I was playing blue, may I throw this in just as a curve filter? Maybe. But it wouldn't be my first pick. Um, it's a one mana, one one. Okay. A lot of people, one one for one, not bad, but it doesn't do anything else for you. So it is on curve to play for first drop. But then it can eternalize for six mana. I don't want a vanilla four four for six mana. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I, I don't think it would be in a draft, it's definitely not going to be anywhere near my top picks. And my sealed, only if I'm in blue, and only if I need something to fill the slot. Aven of Enduring Hope. A 5 cost 3-3 three, three with flying. That all right there is not bad already. Uh, but when it enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life. Hey, life gain is not going to be bad. Um... There's that horse card that if you ain't seen it yet, when you gain life at the end of your turn, if you did, you get a 5-5 five, five horse. I don't think there's ever going to be a horse tribal anytime soon, but um, it's definitely going to be a, a card to be reckoned with and sealed at least, I would say. Carrion, Carrion Screecher. This card looks really familiar. I think there was a card in Almond Cat that looked very close to this, but I'm not going to, you know, harp on that too much because brain not working again. Um, four mana, three one, flying. To me, a little bit high cost. I'd rather it be a three three for four, but, you know, I'm a little greedy. Oasis Ritualist, four mana, two four. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or you can exert it and tap it to add two mana of any color to your mana pool. I don't think green's ever going to turn this card down. I mean, A, if you're playing multicolor, you got mana fixing. B, if you're in green, you're probably going to want to ramp anyways, and even though this is a four cost that you're probably going to pay on, play on turn three or turn, you know, I would say you'd be stretching it on turn two. You could play it on turn three if you have a mana dork. Um, but, I mean, you're going to be able to ramp into stuff. I mean, green's going to be playing this all day if they get it. Marauding Bone Lasher. Two mana and a black. Three, three. Um, it can't block unless you control another zombie. I mean, I'm not going to add it to my zombie deck, but I'm sure somebody will. I mean, it'll be fun. Strategic planning. I love the art on this one. Because you got good old uh, Jace and Gideon here uh, talking over, uh, you know, the background of the Nicobolus horns. I mean, just the art. I, I like the art. I mean, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest in your graveyard I mean in this set I mean putting stuff in your graveyard is not necessarily a bad thing and you're getting a card draw for two Let's see survivors encampment we've already covered that one wall of forgotten pharaohs we've already covered defiant Kenra uh, we've not covered this but you know it's a two mana two two it's a, a red bear it's a vanilla card that's all we really got to say about it. Uh, Cursed Horde. I'm not sure about how I feel about this card. Like like I said, I am running a zombie deck currently in standard. Um, and in my deck, I have one drops, two drops, three drops, five drops. I skip fours. I have no four drops. Um, and I'm not sure I want them. I mean... That deck, no, you know, as long as you get three mana, you're running over people. Um, so do I want to throw something, you know, that's on the next curve up to get this and make, you know, attack, attacking and attacking zombie get indestructible? 
Mm. I might have to play test it, but I, I doubt that I doubt that it will find a spot in my deck. Fervent Paincaster. It's a three cost three one. Not bad. Um, you can tap it to deal one damage to a target player. Not bad. Um, I think it's MTG Heroes and Legends. Uh, they call this Death by a Thousand Cuts. Uh, and then you can also uh, exert it and tap it to deal one damage to a target creature. I'm sorry, but I think that's ridiculous to exert it to deal one damage to a creature. Okay, there's going to be that time that it comes in handy because, say, for example, if your opponent had the same card, hey, you're going to remove that card. If you got anything with small bodies on it, you're going to get rid of it, but I don't want to tap this card down for two turns to get rid of one creature. It's not how I feel about it. All right, a card that led to major disappointment for me. Um, I think it was for GP Vegas. We saw some art get leaked um, that was this art, and a lot of people, including myself, was hoping and dreaming that this was going to be the art for an invocation of Lightning Bolt, and it's not. So we got Ramunk, Ren, Ren, Rupnap, Ruins. It's a desert. You can tap it for a uh, colorless. You can tap it and pay one life to add a red mana to your bowl and then you can pay four two and two red to sacrifice a desert doesn't have to be this one um, and rampant ruins deals two damage to each opponent I could see a card like this getting played in EDH where there's a lot of multiplayer uh, playing uh, to see it in standard nah maybe sealed and draft maybe but I, you know, I wouldn't be putting it into a standard deck. All right, and I'm gonna put the name of this guy, Darju, Darju with eyes open. Um, an interesting card to say the least. He's a five cost, so three and two white, which is playable. Um, I mean, heck, I got my Regal Caracal that's the same cost, and I play it in my cat deck. He's Vigilance, 4-3. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, and put it into the put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. If a source would deal damage to a Planeswalker you control, prevent one damage of that damage. I mean, not bad if you're playing Super Friends. Uh, you know, lots of Planeswalkers and doing something like that. I mean, hey, it's a tutor. I think it'd be all right. I'd say if you were to draft or open a Planeswalker in your sealed pool, hey, throw this in to possibly help find it and hopefully prevent some damage to it. That ain't going to hurt. All right. There's a full art forest. Always happy about a full art. That'll probably get added to my pre-release kit tonight. And hey, hey. We got new punch outs. We got the exerted and we got eternal eye. Well, eternal. That'll be fun. I like the color on those. Heck yeah, I hope I get a bunch of these. I mean, I know people will go, why? Myself, I like using the negative one counters. People think it's silly. I think it's a good darn reminder. People are always using dice for one one counters. And, you know, this is kind of the off you know I don't know if you're putting a dice on my card to give it a negative one or a plus one this tells me it's a negative one done so I know silly whatever I am silly it is what it is all right last pack then we'll uh, do a quick recap on what all we got and we'll shut her down for the night so I can get some sleep and edit this in the morning All right, counter veiling wins three cost counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each card in your graveyard. Okay, early game. This is not going to be, I would say, super great, but I mean, 
it's not bad. I mean, you you got they got to pay one extra for any land in your graveyard. So this could be an extra two in your graveyard for turn three if you've been that unlucky or well been playing spells or later in the game it could be a lot and it could shut down whatever their plan was and you can cycle it for two if you don't need it if you're in blue play this we got another sandblast we've already covered them kindled fury already covered that grizzly survivor covered amber scald i don't think that we've covered this one three mana two and a green target creature you control gets plus one until the end of the turn it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls this card i'm excited for to put into any green deck standard sealed draft I could you know this could probably go into other formats as well I mean it's basically fight without the fight um, it deals damage to it for its power it gets plus one even and it's not taking the damage back to itself to possibly kill itself I'm playing it in green all right moaning wall we've already covered that one and wall of the forgotten pharaohs that happened in the same pack survivors encampment covered it oketra's avenger uh yes we've covered this one as well it's good it prevent all damage that would be dealt to this creature be dealt to it this turn okay thorn moloch already covered it unconventional tactics i personally am excited about this card as i said i'm playing zombies in standard this might be added to my deck it might take away a little bit of my removal but if i can get zombies in the air and then whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control i can pay one and put this back in my hand it's recursion of a spell and a buff i mean i'm probably gonna be crazy but this is gonna go into my standard deck i mean it, it is i'm gonna at least test it play test it see how it works and we'll, we'll go from there i'll let you know how it works in a future video all right, Omnis Sphinx. Uh, this one I think will definitely see some play um, because whenever you cycle a card, target creature and opponent controls gets negative two until the end of turn. So you could either bluff them and be holding cards in your hand, or use it as a combat blocking trick because you can cycle at instant speed. You go to attack they block oh their creatures not gonna kill yours because you cycled something away same thing you attack or they attack in you have a blocker cycle something you're gonna kill their creature they're not gonna kill yours because you wimpied it out all right consign to oblivion all right we got return target non-land permanent to its owner sand for two mana not bad it's basically unsummon for two hey i like bounce spells blue likes bounce spells everybody likes bounce spells oblivion aftermath target opponent discards two cards i mean late game if they have two cards in hand could be a game changer I mean, they may have had something ready to blow you out of the water. This is getting rid of him into a graveyard. Uh, good thing, bad thing. Could go either way, or they could be holding two lands to fake you out. I mean, it is what it is. 
All right, we got our last rare here. Oh, yeah, Angel of Condemnation. Flying, four mana, three, three. And this one I like pretty well, because for three mana and tap it, exile target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, so you're going to bounce the creature out of the game for a second, swing in, and it comes back. Not bad. I mean, it's good to get stuff through. Or you can do the same thing, three, tap, exert it, and exile target creature until uh, Angel of Commendation leaves the battlefield. So it's basically um, an exile target creature, uh, like the enchantment that I can't think off the top of my head right now because I'm so tired. Um, but, you know, as long as this card's still on the battlefield, it's going to be exiled. And you can do it multiple times, unlike the enchantment. So, hey, I mean, if I'm in white, heck, this card might put me into white, in fact. I mean, it's a nice card. Um, I don't like exerting it, but for, I mean, for a good removal, I, I guess it's acceptable. And we got a planes, and we got a zombie token. Wish I would have changed that up a little bit instead of just being the same old Omniket token. Oh well. Alright. So let me grab a few things here. Let's talk about strictly the rares that we got in our pools here. Dropping stuff. Sorry, guys. So at the very beginning, I was excited about black. If I was actually playing this in sealed because of Bantu's Last Reckoning. But if we were to look just at the rare side of everything. I mean... I think I might be into red white <laughs> I mean these two don't have a lot of synergy with the stuff that's in there but say if we took out soul scar mage not play that we have our removal we have our board white and so watering suns we have our leave we bring our creatures back to our hand we board wipe I already talked about that sweet little play we got the overwhelming splendor which can screw over your to opponents and heck this could work you know decently with this as well late game you know yeah it's an eight cost but you play that say if they have a handful of creatures over three they go down to ones next turn you place uh you play leave then play sweltering suns that right there is five mana that you played, and you apparently already have eight because you played Overwhelming Splendor. Um, and then with what you brought back to your hand, use that three mana to bring some stuff back, and you're on the advantage. And then this one, like I said, auto include just because it's removal. This one, we did not draft a. Uh, a planeswalker into our sealed pool so in sealed I would probably put him off to the side I mean you know a 4-3 isn't bad but there's gonna be other things that I could play for five mana that would be better in its spot so unfortunately yeah he has vigilance but he's just not worth it unless you unless you have a plan to walk with him um, so my opinion so far I'm extremely excited um, by the time this video goes up, I'm probably already going to be playing in a actual pre-release instead of just opening one for you guys. Um, 
because like I said I went to my uh, local hobby shop let me switch this over to a full cam here my local hobby shop that I frequent Hobby Central Delaware Ohio if you're in Ohio if you're around Delaware check them out Jamie the owner is a great guy cam is the uh, guy that uh, helps run the events both great guys check them out um, but yeah by the time this video goes up I'll be playing um, at their noon pre-release um, and hopefully I mean I don't want to say this was bad pulls but I'm not sure how I feel about it yet um, I'm excited to play I mean I'm just playing out excited to play that's there's no question about that um, what do you think about Hour of Devastation so far? How do you think it's going to meld with uh, Amiket in a sealed and draft environment? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I want to know what you think about the set. Um, and again, thank you for uh, watching. Again, Captain Redbeard, please like, please subscribe, share it. Let your friends know. Hopefully I can get this video uploaded as soon as possible. Uh, barring any troubles with Time Warner. If anything, I'm going to take my laptop down to a buddy's house and upload this so that I can get this up while people are still looking for it. You guys have a great day. I hope you didn't stay out too late playing uh, a midnight pre-release. And uh, have a good time. Thank you for watching.